So moving up in our video series about Linux, we reach to the processes and what are them and how to run them in the background and foreground mode. So if you want to learn more about this, stick with me. Hello and what's up guys, medium guy here. In this video, we'll see what are processes and how to manage them, how to monitor them and how to run them in foreground and background. And right before I start the video, just don't forget to watch my previous video on this playlist and I have many other playlists on my channel. So make sure to give a visit. And with that, let's move to the terminal and start this video. So basically a process is when a program runs in our Linux machine and from the simplest command to the most complex one, when we run them, it will try to create a new process and it also it will have a unique ID for itself. So basically that is called the process ID. So as I mentioned, the process ID is unique for each of the processes that is created and it is most of the time a four or five numbers that are assigned to a single process and will never have the same process ID for two processes. So as I said, we can create processes in the foreground and background. So let's make some foreground processes. So if I hit LS, it is a process that is created and processed and when it is done, it will output the result of that process. So of course it has a process ID for itself. And this way that I hit LS in the terminal, it is a foreground process and it just creates and when it's done, it gets removed. And also if it wants any input from the keyboard, I'll simply be able to input the required values. So the command will be run in the foreground and of course I should wait to the process to be done and the result to be outputted so I'll be able to create my next processes by running my next commands. So the basic way to create a background process is to put an ampersand to the end of the command. So if I say like for example ls-la and an ampersand if I hit enter in here, even if I get the exact same output, but this command has run in the background mode and this is the process ID that is assigned to the ls-la command. So in this way, if the command that I'm running in the background requires any input, I won't be able to input from the keyboard and the process will move to the stop state so if I want to list all the processes that are running currently inside this Linux machine by using the ps command, so I'll hit ps. In here, I'll be able to see the processes that are currently running in this machine. So basically I have a bash process with this unique process ID and the ps command that I just run with this exact unique process ID. So of course this ps command has its own options. So like for example if I hit ps-aux the first column represents the user that, that created that process. The second column is the process ID. Next column is the percentage of CPU usage. The next column is the percentage of memory usage by that process and some other information about the processes that are running currently inside my Linux machine. So the A option that I passed to the PS command was to show all the processes for all other users except for the user that I've logged in with. So as we can see, we can see the processes for the root user and the test user also. The X option that I passed to the PS command will try to show the processes that does not have terminals. The U option that I passed was to show more details of the processes that are being run currently inside my machine. So if I want to kill these processes, I can use the kill command 
and by passing the process ID for the processes, I'll be able to kill and stop those processes. So if I say kill and I'll try to pass one of the process IDs for the currently running processes. So I'll say 890, I'll hit enter and in here I'll, I'll get the error for the operation not permitted. So because I tried to stop a process for another user which belongs to another user so basically I don't have permission to do that. So if I say sudo at the beginning it will try to run the kill command by the root user. If I hit enter again I'll say ps ux and in here I see that the process with the id of 890 has been removed from the processes list but you may wonder I have another copy of the exact same process but with another process ID this is because I'm running this process using docker and it will auto detect if the process stops anytime it will try to automatically start that process again so what happens if I try to stop the bash process that is currently running for my current user Basically, it is the shell session that I am currently running it. So if I say kill, I'll pass the process ID 2793. I'll hit enter. Again, I'll see that the process still remains in there. So we have options for the kill command. So if I say like, for example, kill dash nine, the process ID, if I hit enter, it will try to completely remove the process and as you can see I've logged out of that shell. So if I try to log back in I'll say ps-aux. This time I see that another bash process has been created with another PID. So also in the Linux system we can have zombie and orphan processes. So in Linux for each process we have a parent process that calls to the creation of the child process so because of that we can have orphan processes so like for example if a parent process has been killed and somehow the child process still remains that would be called the orphan process so basically the parent process would switch to the init process which is the parent for all the processes that can be created in the Linux system. So we have some other processes called daemon processes. So basically the daemon processes are the background processes that mostly run with the root access. So in other words, daemon processes run in background and wait for something to happen so that it would do some defined jobs. Like for example the printer daemon will wait until we send a signal to it so it would be printing some pages. So the next and the last command in this video we have the top command. So this is a command to use to monitor the processes and the CPU and memory usages by them. So as we can see it tries to update itself time by time and update the percentage of CPU and memory usages so in this way we can monitor the processes and their resource usages. So with that that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new in this one. If you want me to go deeper in this, just go ahead and ask me in the comment section. Also, if you have any questions, just again, go ahead and ask me in the comment section. Also, don't forget to watch my previous videos in this playlist, which I'll put the link down below. And also my other playlist that I have in my channel. I have cool stuff in there. Just don't forget to give it, give a visit. And please do like and subscribe. And with that, I hope to see you in the next videos.